Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of STRONomics. I will be hosting alone today. So if you've been looking forward to hear from Bill Faith, um, probably skip this episode because it is just Kenny Bedwell alone on his own. So be careful, everybody. Um, <laughs> so today, uh, so Bill's out on vacation. And we missed an episode uh, for recording, so I have to uh, step in here and do that. But I have no problem doing that because I have something I want to share with you guys. And I've been talking to a lot of people about recently, and I'm surprised on how many people don't understand that when you're trying to find profitable short-term rentals, the keys that you need to identify profitable short-term rentals in today's market, these keys have changed over time. They're generic categories, but when we apply them to each market, uh, things change a little bit and evolve over time. And when we talk about the general uh, economy or stroconomy, I don't know if we want to call it that, of uh, in the STR industry, we have seen market shift. We talked about this on previous episodes, you know, the Airbnb bust, uh, as Bill Faith likes to call it, the Airbnb bust. Uh, it just depends on, you know, I guess your generation and which hashtag you cho choose to use there. But the idea, though, is that there are some markets down, maybe not as down as what some people think or say, but a lot of people are down. I'm, I'm comparing the last six months of 2020, January 2023 to July or June. I'm recording this at the end of July and I can see some of the numbers coming in now for July. Um, I can see those numbers and compare them for the first six, seven months of 2022. And a lot of people are down 10, 15%, even some are 30% down, depending on the market. Um, whereas there's a few people who are up and it just depends on your, your property. But there are key attributes and characteristics of these type of properties that are up. And that's what I want to share with you guys today, because I know a lot of you listening, I'm having conversations with people, um, you know, in between podcast episodes, just, you know, in life and people scheduling calls with me who listen to the podcast and they're trying to find deals and they're asking, Kenny, where should I be looking? How should I be looking? What things should I be looking for? Uh, what makes a successful property and so on and in this market more particularly. And it's it's really hard to find. And, you know, I have uh, paralysis by analysis and all the, you know, common excuses essentially that I hear. Um, and what I have found is let's study the top performing properties first, identify what works for them, and then come out and actually, you know, try to replicate and find deals like those in those markets. Um, so I'm going to talk about the four keys of finding profitable short-term rentals. And this works in every single market across the United States. So the four keys, where are the four keys? Number one, the first key, and probably the most important key that gets undervalued nine times out of 10 is location. So location is of the utmost importance with short-term real estate investing. Now, there's different types of location. When I say location, don't just think like, geographical, like, okay, I need to be downtown or I need to be, you know, uh, near the national park or on the beach or, or whatever that is. Yes, that is important in a lot of markets, but it also isn't geographically as important in other markets. What I mean by that is if we take a mountain market, for example, we look at like a Western North Carolina, um, even North Georgia or, you know, any mountain market, most mountain markets, I'll say, uh, this is market dependent the views are more important than the locate the actual location of the property it doesn't matter if it's near town it doesn't matter if it's near the freeway or it's only five minutes from you know this area or that it's about the views and you know what you can the experience that a guest can have in that particular market so the location on that end is not necessarily geographical in the sense of like oh it's you know this pinpoint you know google maps five minutes from here it's the uh, think about it is like the um, the feature, the amenity almost of the views, like having that type of location is more important than being, you know, within a certain distance. Whereas in other markets, it might be a certain distance or it might be a certain neighborhood or certain things like that. But it varies market to market. And the problem that I see a lot of 
especially rookie investors make when they're trying to find a first property or just a property is they'll look in the market and they'll say, okay, I just need to invest in this market. When in reality, it's not about investing in a market. It's about investing in a property within a market and properties are in specific neighborhoods, communities. They have different views, different off, like whatever it is, they, they're all unique. And we need to choose wisely and understand what works in that market first before going and investing in a normal property. I'll, I'll take another example on this because I really want this to uh, everyone listening to this episode, if you continue to listen on, um, to really understand this concept of location and why it's so important. So if we take a look at um, uh, in the Smokies, there's been a lot of cabins being built that are indoor, uh, that have indoor swimming pools. So if we if we take a look at that and you go, okay, well, wow, yeah, these properties with indoor pools are making so much more money than you know the, the other cabins. But if we start looking at properties with amazing views in the Smokies, and I mean amazing, like 10 out of 10 first properties with pools, like indoor pools, they actually make about the same. Um, and however, properties with indoor pools closer or nearer into town of Pigeon Forge or even Gatlinburg are doing better than the properties with the amazing views. But if the property with an indoor pool is like further out and has no view, it's geographically like not important, not as important, it's doing the same, if not less than the property with the amazing views. So there's a couple different like takeaways from that that you can kind of learn, like glean from in, in the sense like, well, yeah, you can go get a property without an indoor pool in those areas and, and it still do really well as long as it has amazing views. But also it's really important to be in town and then also have that indoor pool. So it's like, we got to understand how these things tie together and how location truly impacts revenue and what different types of location factors are involved in this. So don't just go, great, I can, you know, I can go. So the other keys, by the way, are quality, design, decor and amenities. And I'm going to talk about each one of these in detail. But the this common, there's this common theme now where people are like, I can go and I can just update this property and make it look amazing. Well, guess what? You can do that. But if it isn't in the right location, it's not going to make a lot of money. I'll give you one more example because this is the most important key. And I started with it first. So <laughs> emphasize that. Um, the, the first, uh, so sorry, the example is I, I was talking to a couple who bought a property in a mountain market. I'm going to keep it vague here because they might be listening. Uh, and I'm not sure if they want me to share the story, but anyway, they've spent a lot of money. And when I say a lot of money, I'm talking like $80,000 more on interior furnishing design and decor. The house is, looks amazing. The interior is amazing. The amenities are amazing. They did a fabulous job, but the call with me wasn't to gloat about how awesome their property looked. The call with me was, Kenny, we're not making it. We're not getting any bookings. Why aren't we getting any bookings? What's going on here? Now, I didn't tell them to buy this property and tell them to do spend all the money on the design and decor. But when we looked at the market, it was in a mountain market. Their property was not a traditional cabin. It was like kind of a new, not modern style home, but just kind of a house that was updated on the exterior. It was nice. Um, the interior, obviously amazing, but they were in the middle of a valley. They had very, very little views. And when we look at that market and we actually study the top properties out, the number one characteristic of all those properties was that they have views. And then the second one was that they look like a cabin. Like those were the two most desirable things. And the person doesn't have either one of those. So they're competing against what everybody else wants, what the guest avatar, the buyer persona wants. They're competing against that in that market. And they can't offer because they just, they phys their property physically can't offer that. And they're going to suffer because of that. So there's diminishing returns to design and decor in particular amenities, because if you're discounting location, you can only earn so much potential. So never discount location when you're looking. Now, next, let's move to the, so remember there's four keys. So the first one is location. The second one is uh, interior quality and exterior quality. The, th the third one is design and decor. And the last one is value adds, i.e. amenities. So um, the let's let's talk about quality. I, I sat down with another couple and they showed me a property 
um, in a uh, in Kentucky. And they were like, Kenny, we heard you on a free workshop you put out, talk about location and harp on location. And we found a property with a perfect location. I'm like, great. Yeah, show it to me. Let's check it out. This is awesome. Good for you. You found a property for sale in an amazing location. Let's check out this property. They sent me this and it literally looked like the house my grandpa grew up in and like lived in for his entire life. Like not a short term rental at all. And I was like, Meh. and they're like, Kenny, it's in the middle of town. And we're going to, we're going to spend like, you know, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 on making this thing like amazing. And I was like, are you going to bulldoze it and then build a new house? And they're like, no, 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 no. We're just going to update the interior. And I was like, what are you going to do with the exterior? Like, this looks like, like I said, my grandpa's house, like people and sure, you could like change the quality of the exterior, but I mean, you're requiring more money and more effort into it. So even though location, they, they took that into account, you still have to take into account the quality of the property. And if it's priced at a point and the revenue is at a certain place, like it doesn't make sense to dump hundreds of thousands of dollars in a property to improve the quality of it just because it's in the good location. So quality, I wouldn't say is equally as important because you can change the quality. You can invest in quality of the property, meaning the interior, updating the interior or the exterior, you're adding things to the property as location, but just because it's in the right location doesn't mean it's the right property for Airbnb or, or short-term rental. That's really, really important to understand. Um, you know, and there's, like I said, there's diminishing returns to every dollar you invest in the property beyond the purchase price. There just is because revenue, you can't just make, just because you put money in doesn't mean it's just going to make more money. There's, there's obviously an ROI for every dollar you put in after you per, or like after, you know, that purchase price of the property. So when you're making these decisions of, okay, we're going to update this property, what's the return going to be? You need to ask yourself that question, especially when trying to find and identify a profitable short-term rental. Okay, let's talk about number three, uh, which is design and decor. This one's starting to blow up all over the place. Um, you know, my good friends at Minoan talk about this. Uh, you know, uh, their competitors who shall not be named. I host GPO. That's that's their competitors. Um, you know, interior designers and decorators are all over this. And they do a fabulous job. And there's obviously value to making your design and decor the best and having a property and adding that to a property, especially in a market where that has not been introduced or a market where the average design and decor is pretty low, um, can give you an advantage, can make you more money. I talked about this, the luxury side. Luxury is almost proven in almost every market across the country. If it's a vacation market, keep that in mind. If it's a vacation market with traffic drivers, demand is still there. It's not in the middle of nowhere, but people are traveling there for vacation. Luxury properties are always in demand and they're always the first ones to get booked, assuming they're in the right location and then they have high quality. So design and decor is super important and can impact your revenue. However, I get this question all the time and it kind of ties in with equality. Well, if I go and invest $100,000, what can I get? What's the ROI on my investment into the design and decor, essentially the furnishings, investing that much money instead of, say, $50,000? You know, and that's very hard to measure and track and to identify and go, okay, yes, you're going to make $20,000 more a year because you increased your design and decor. And in a lot of markets, because it's not it's not been introduced, there's no properties with that level of quality or that level of luxury or whatever style you're bringing and furnishings you're bringing to the table. Because it hasn't been introduced in the market, you can't mathematically say, yes, I'm going to make 100,000 more, 20,000 more, 50,000 more. You just can't because it's not there yet. The data points aren't there. So what do you do? How do you do that? The best thing to do is to go look in comparable markets and compare the percentage difference of those type of properties that you think you're turning your, you know, you're going to furnish like, or, you know, the type of uh, design and decor you're going to add to your property, comparable properties and comparable markets, and look at how much more they're making than the other properties and use that as a guide. But it will never be perfect science, uh, but it can be helpful. But keep in mind, you can always 
improve design and decor to a property. That's not the thing that sets you apart. It's location, quality, design and decor, and value adds. It's all four of those things. So don't just discount one or the other and never discount location, more importantly. I've seen a lot of people, and I keep going back to this because I hear it all the time. Well, all you need to do is just invest, you know, 50, 60, 100 grand into your design and decor and you'll be the best property in the market. That is so false. That is so wrong. That is limiting. No, don't do that. You need to make sure that you're touching on all four of these, not just highlighting one in particular to know that you will be successful when you're looking at a short-term rental deal. It needs to check the boxes of why people are going to that market. It's obvious that everybody wants luxury or nice, you know, they want to stay in really nice properties. That's true. But if you're in the Valley and you don't have views and that's why everybody's coming to the market, then yeah, you're not going to get booked. It doesn't matter how nice you make the property. Okay. Um, if you have a, you know, my grandpa's house, you know, brick, old brick house, and you're not doing anything on the exterior and it's a nice updated interior and people enjoy the outdoor experience and in, in this area. And um, yeah, your property's not going to stand out, even though it's got a really nice updated interior with design and decor and maybe a hot tub or a pool. Like, so don't skimp on, you know, one of the four, like leverage all four when you're looking for a deal. Um, and we always start with location. Okay, last thing, value adds like amenities. So yes, we know that big amenities, hot tubs, pools, game rooms, theater rooms, I think big, big amenities drive revenue and impact revenue significantly. Um, your smaller amenities, you know, games, EV charger even, um, coffee, stuff like that, that's that's great, but it's not, we're, we're talking amenities that drive thousands of dollars and can change, you know, we're talking a 10, 20%, 30% increase in revenue simply by adding that amenity. So what I mean by this, when I'm talking about finding profitable short-term rentals in regards to amenities, um, I'm looking at a, a, a property that's overpriced right now in, um, don't want to say them. Okay. In the state of Kentucky, there we go. I'll, I'll keep it generic. I'm looking at it. It's a, it's a, fairly recent build. Um, and it's in the state of Kentucky and it's overpriced right now for what it would do if I left it alone. It's updated. It's got a really nice exterior. It's in a good location. It's got a nice interior design and decor. I mean, you can just knock it out of the park, but it doesn't have the amenities. It doesn't have anything. However, if I go and I budget and I say, well, look, if I add a swimming pool to this property that currently can only probably make about $60,000, $70,000 in its current state, how much more with this adding the swimming pool to this particular property, putting it in after the fact, how much more would this property make? And when we look at that data and we look at those numbers, it turns out it could do like almost twice as much. Properties with pools or water in that area that people can swim in are doing like well over 100K. And I've checked, I've confirmed local, you know, sources there and like just, you know, kind of running the numbers, you know, if I'm going to invest my own money, like I need to, you know, make sure that this isn't just like some, okay, cool. You know, I, it says it in the data, but I want to check the experts as well and see, yes, that can impact swimming pools have a huge impact on revenue and all the properties here are making over six figures uh, gross revenue because of that in this particular market and this property. Definitely, and when you look at it that way and you go, okay, cool. Well, how much does it cost out of pool? In this market, you know, shopping around for pools, it's not too expensive. I know it varies market to market, but it's like $70,000 for an indoor nice pool patio area like the whole shebang. I know that's relatively cheap depending on where you're at. Some markets, I heard it's 50, some it's 100 more, just depends. But okay, $70,000, attack that on to, you know, my cash all in on this property. And now instead of 60, I'm going to do like 120, maybe even 130. Yeah. I mean, now we're talking about, you know, I, I don't remember what the purchase price is, but um, I think it was like around 650 or like something around there. Yeah. $60,000 gross rev or 60,000 gross revenue on 650 purchase is terrible, but you tack on even, so let's say a hundred thousand. So let's say, it, you know, uh, so 650 purchase, I have to spend a hundred thousand dollars to get a pool put in and, and, you know, at 750, like, now I'm making 120, 130. Now the deal starts to look a lot sweeter, doesn't it? So even then, like the numbers make sense. They're starting to pencil out and make sense by adding that particular amenity. But guess what? This property, number one, 
it's in the right location. Number two, the quality, the interior quality and exterior quality are very high. Now, when I want to be careful here because we can keep in mind, you can always change the quality, interior and exterior quality, the design and decor, and you can always add amenities for the most part. You need to keep that in mind. Like if you're in a beach market and you can't add a pool and everybody else has pools, uh, I probably not look, continue looking at that deal. That's a red flag to me. And we'll talk about checklists in a second. But it's really, really important to know that, you know, if you nail the location and you're nailing everything and you just have to add maybe one or two of these things and you know you can do it very easily, you know, and the deal still pencils out or that might make the deal. And that's kind of how we're seeing the deals today, to be frank about it. There's no turnkey properties out there that I've personally seen that are just ready to go, already have a proven rent roll that aren't overpriced. They're just not out there. So how am I finding deals is I'm looking at the location. I'm identifying what locations in the market work first. I'm not looking for properties first. I'm looking for the location in the markets first and knowing where to invest in that market. And then I'm looking for properties in that location and I'm judging their quality, their design, well, the potential design and decor that I can add and also the amenities. Now, when I talk about adding these things in, it's so important to think about the marketing behind it as well. So when I look at a property and it's like run down and, but it's in the right location and maybe the quality, the exterior quality is good. I know I can update the interior and I can add that design and decor. That's when I start going, okay, well, if I put in $50,000, how much can that 50,000 make me, you know? Um, and if, it, if it's really not that much more, based on looking comparable markets or other properties in the market or whatever that is, then it's just not going to be a good deal. You know, turn away. Don't get emotional. Be logical here. The four keys to finding profitable short-term rentals help you remain logical, but also help you strategize, right? It's about the strategy, the investment strategy of what you're about to purchase to maximize your returns on your investment. So a lot of people, they don't come in with a strategy when they purchase a short-term rental. They come in with just, I'm gonna buy one that's gonna make money. That's the plan. That's not a plan today. That's not a strategy. Think of like any other, I've said this before, but think of every single investment that you make it's you have you're supposed to have some sort of strategy, right? Like think of like the stocks when they say blue chip stocks, like the most popular stocks, you know, and Warren Buffett says just buy stocks that you're common with and companies that you buy stuff with. So like Apple or Facebook or Google, I'm not telling you to invest in any of these, by the way, just telling you like this is the this is the the you know common strategy that um, the layman or, or rookies do. But that there's a strategy to that, you know, buying stocks that you're familiar with. And companies you're familiar with because you don't know how to yet do the research over here. So like, I'm not saying go buy properties because they look good, but create a strategy, an investment strategy so that you can maximize returns in the short term rental industry. And this is one of them, the four keys. When you understand each of these keys in this market, that's when you know how to quickly determine if a property is a good deal or a bad deal. So Meaning if I go into a market, if I, if you give me any market, the first thing I'm going to do is say, Kenny, um, you know, you have to find a deal on this market or, you know, you have a limited time to find a deal on this market. So I'll, you know, look throughout the entire year. The first thing I'm going to do is go study that market out. What are the things that work location wise, quality, exterior quality? What's that compared to the competition? What are they, what do they have? You know, if everybody has cabins and the top performers have cabins, like the, you know, the the shiplap wood and that, that traditional cabin look, why would I go buy a vinyl siding home? That doesn't make sense. But if you're looking for properties first with no strategy, then you don't know that. So study the markets by studying the location, the quality of properties there, the exterior and interior quality, the design and decor, and the value adds. So what do properties typically have? I'll, I'll just say this at the end here. In my market in Watkins Glen, I know exactly what the standards are for each of these different categories. I know what the best locations are. I know what the quality is. I know what all these different things. None of the properties are have aced every single one of these, which means there is an advantage in this marketplace that I can take advantage of. And I've got a game plan for two to three years out when, of amenities and things I can add to the property 
design and decor I can do to the property, things I can invest in my property to keep it at the top and the best for that market. I'm not sinking in hundreds of thousands out the gate all at one time to do that. I'm doing it piece by piece to stay ahead of the competition because I don't need to, to have this amazing, like, you know, I invested, oh, I invested $300,000 in this property on top of the purchase price to be the best of the best because nobody's doing that. No one's even close to that. I'm just staying one or two steps ahead of everyone else. So I'm always booked because I understand the buyer persona and the guest avatar of that market and what the other competitors are doing. Um, and sometimes that's all it takes. And my theory, my strategy here is just stay a step ahead of everybody. You don't need to invest a ton of money, um, you know, up front, like hundreds of thousands of dollars to all of a sudden just be the best property. You can, and that can bump your revenue up. But remember, there's diminishing returns. And so when I put in a dollar, I want at least 20 to 30 cents back in the first year for that dollar, if not the whole dollar back, that would be kind of nice, you know, but 20 to 30 cents back. And so I'm going to do that wisely as I update these things. But I specifically knew that and I had my strategy laid out before I even bought the property by understanding the market first. So, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, these are really important. I talk about these four keys all the time. Uh, just a reminder, if you're not in my Facebook group, the STR data host, and this is stuff we talk about in the group. Other people bring these things up. Um, you know, and we, we love to talk about this next time on the next episode, Bill and I will be together again. So do not worry if you're like, Kenny, this was, you know, whatever, hopefully this was enjoyable. And, uh, you know, you took away some good nuggets from this, but guys going forward, study those four keys before you look for your next investment property. And I will see you on the next episode of STR Anomics. See ya. <laughs>